Hi YouTube, Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy again and just a quick update tonight on firmware. Um, a few of you have kindly prompted about firmware on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II which I'm recording this video on. Um, remind me to get the firmware updated and I did so, well the, the dealers did for me, so it was already up at version 3.4 but it did prompt me to have a look at firmware a little bit on there. And before we go any further, don't forget if you're not a subscriber already, hit the subscribe button below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that gets all YouTube's algorithms all over the place and gets them to actually boost my video so more people can see it. And for those people who've supported me previously in the past, thank you very much. For those who haven't, there is a, a PayPal link if you would like to donate something for a cup of coffee or something towards the fuel for me to go out and carry on doing these videos. Anything's gratefully accepted. Thank you very much. Now, the other thing is as well, keep watching this video till the end because I've got some wonderful news if you're a Lumix user. Um, so, keep watching. Firmware. Yeah, had a look on my firmware. It prompted me to have a look at what I've got on all the cameras because of those comments. And thanks very much for those comments. I did appreciate them because it does, it does get your mind going a little bit. And so I knew that the camera's on version 3.4. And what I did is I just checked in the back to have a look on the firmware version on the screen. On both the Lumix and the Olympus, you can check the firmware settings just by looking on the, on the camera settings on the main menu, and you'll find in there for version information. Have a look for both. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II should be on version 3.4 for its best. Now I've got three cameras uh, which I'm bothered about on this, which are the GX8, the G9, and this Olympus, which I'm recording at the moment. I had a look at the GX8 and the GX8 was on version 1.1 which is still the correct one and I could find this out by looking on the Lumix website. The Olympus is done slightly differently. The Olympus used the Olympus workspace program and the, you connect it up through USB and that will interrogate the camera and it will also, if it's not up to date, it'll go off and get the newest versions from the internet, download them on the camera, install them and it'll do that for both the camera body and the lenses. So it's really, really good on that one. The Lumix works slightly different. You've got to go on the Lumix website and it'll give you the current updates information on that. It has files, links to the download files, and all you do is just download them. It's a, either a self-extracting EXE file or it's a zip file. Whichever way, there's a file in there either for the lens or the camera and that will, um, you just put that onto the root of the SD card and it installs through that. What I did find though, which rather shocked me, first of all, the G9. I remember a couple of years ago, the whole world was desperate for the version two software to come out. And the version two software for the firmware really was a huge improvement. It was like buying a whole new camera. And that was absolutely fantastic. When you just spent a fortune on a camera um, to get the improvements, which was almost like getting a brand new model for free, was wonderful. So we did that. I'd obviously done version 2.1, and I realised on the website we're up to 2.3, I hadn't looked for so long, I was just enjoying my shooting and it also had a year off where we didn't do anything of course with pandemics. So I hadn't realised that, that I actually missed out version 2.2 and 2.3. So that was well worth up upgrading them and they give improvements to the autofocus and all sorts of things on the camera from that. But also the lenses, almost all of my lenses were out of date firmware wise. And it might seem insignificant, on, a little bit insignificant on a lens, but lenses, the firmware really is important. For instance, the Olympus 45mm 1.8 had improvements which wasn't so much to do with going on Olympus cameras, but because this is a cross, a cross uh, manufacturer mount, we're talking about the you know Lumix and Olympus. What it did is it actually had improvements so that the 45mm would work better when connected to a Lumix camera. And since I shoot both, it was a really worthwhile improvement on that. So it's worth doing those. And as I say, most of mine weren't up to speed. So I spent a little bit of time getting the the uh, lenses up, upgraded and getting those on. And to do the lens is very simple. When you've done the camera and upgraded that, then you can just keep on changing lenses and uploading those. Now, as I say, that uploading a slightly different way. So if you've never done a, a firmware update, don't worry, don't panic. I know a few of you do. It's straightforward. There's a few little golden rules in it, but the actual thing is very straightforward. First of all, make sure you have a well, fully charged battery. And if you've got a selection of batteries, make sure you've got the, the one which holds the charge best. 
make sure it's fully charged and that's the battery used in the camera whether it's Olympus or Lumix. For Olympus connect it up to the workspace and connect up the USB connector. All your updates from the Olympus are done through the software and just follow the instructions on the on the camera back and on the software as you're doing it and just keep on changing lenses as and when you finish doing those updates to carry on doing the next one. The Lumix you download the file as I've already said and the other thing on the Lumix is it's put on the SD card. Important thing format a nice new card in that camera that you're going to do the updates on. No other camera not in your PC, not in your Mac, make sure you that you format that SD card afresh on the camera you're going to be installing it on. Then pop it on the PC, copy the file for the camera across into the root of the SD card, stick it in, press play when you've switched the camera on, press the play button and that will give you uh, the prompts to actually install the uh, firmware update. If you're doing it for a lens it's a different file, keep on replacing that file in that root and that will keep on doing the, the lenses and the, the camera body itself. And the procedures are the same for both. But there is an important thing on both the Olympus and the Lumix. Whatever you do, when you're in process of this, do not switch the camera off. Don't press any buttons, don't turn the lens, don't do anything on the camera. Just put it down and watch the screen as it runs through until it prompts you for the next thing. If you don't do this, or if you switch the camera off, it is possible for the firmware to totally stuff your camera up and it's a, a major task if that's the case. So it is worth taking time and effort on to make sure that you're not disturbed on it and just do it. Now there is a, an ideal method which I was telling one of my uh, one of my contributors on here, Graham, who did an update on his GX9 and the, pr the procedure to do upgrades, there is a, a golden procedure to do it. What you need though is you need some boiling water and that's very important for this. It's very important the procedure. What you do, go into the kitchen, download all the files that you need first, the upgrade files, or connect the camera up ready, then go in the kitchen, switch your kettle on, get the water boiling. While the water, while the kettle's boiling, come through, do your upgrades, that's okay. That'll take about a minute, minute and a half. Then what you need to do, make sure you've had about 15 minutes where you're not going to be disturbed. 15 minutes is a minimum that you, that you need where you're not going to be disturbed. Longer is even better. So do the upgrades. That's going to take about two minutes maybe at most. So it's taking a 15 minutes down to just 13 minutes. Go back through the boiling hot kettle of water. Be careful with it. Boiling, boiling water is dangerous. But get yourself a cup. Get yourself either some tea or coffee and all the bits you need. Sugar, sweeteners, milk, whatever it is that you have in it. Lemon. Pour the boiling water into that to the correct amount and make yourself a nice cuppa. Then for the remaining 12 minutes or so sit with your feet up, safe in the knowledge that you've got totally updated and fully functional cameras and lenses. That's my excuse for a cup anyway, I don't care. So, so basically watch out for your, your firmware updates. It does a huge amount of difference on both the lenses and the cameras. Now speaking of which, I did say at the beginning of this that I had a little bit, little special something for you as well, additional to it. And again, from what I've said, if you want to leave a comment below, I'd love to see your comments. But this special thing that we've seen, what is it? Well, very simple. I'm going to, have to, keep, I'm going to look at the, the list here as I'm talking. But Lumix, I, I put a video up about from M43 Rumours the other day about the GH, uh, uh, the GH5 Mark II. And I also said about a possible 2.4 version of the uh, G9 firmware. That has been released, or at least it's been released in the early in the first week of next month. And we found some of the details out from this has actually come from Lumix now. So these are the official release. The GH5 Mark II is released, replacing the GH5. Um, and we've also got the G9 firmware updates. So let's have a little look on what's happening on that because there's some really, really interesting thing on these firmware updates. And don't forget, firmware updates are free. You don't pay for them. So Let's have a little look on this. First of all, the camera is recognised probably when it's connected to a PC USB via the power port, um, via USB power supply. That's great, so we can actually get that functioning properly. Um, the power save mode can be selected while the camera is powered with an AC adapter. It's a separate AC adapter on there, so we can actually have a selectable power save mode on that. One thing I really love is that they're putting a frame marker uh, function on to videos. I know a lot of you do some quite intricate video mixing and rely on frame numbers. That's now being put on 
to the videos on the frames and each individual frame is, is marked on that so that's great that's going to make editing for some people an awful lot easier um you can't oh, this is a, a huge one because of the rise of TikTok and YouTube shorts and things, if you wanted to do vertical format videos, you really needed to be doing them on your camera phone um, because there was, in, in reality, no easy way to do it on a, an SLR, uh, a mirrorless camera like the Olympus or the Lumix. Now what they've done is they've put in vertical shooting orientation to both record and playback straight out the camera. What that means is that you can put your video straight up on the TikTok or YouTube shorts straight off the camera in the correct orientation without having to put them through any sort of rotational software. Absolutely superb insofar as that for those users. Um, it's possible to record and play back vertical videos as I say and the thing is that the camera automatically detects what you're doing so as you turn the camera around sideways it will detect it for you. One thing I really, really love is the fact that they're putting the red record frame right away around the display when you're in a record mode for videos. Now, I'm a couple of feet away from the camera at the moment and I'm recording on this. And to tell you the truth, the seeing the little red dot in the top corner is a pain in the backside. It really is because you can hardly see it, especially as you get older. I'm actually recording on the UMD EM, EM1 Mark II and the record indicator is on the top left. Now the problem is when my mic cable is plugged in, that's obscuring it. So for me to actually see that it sees recording, I've got to peer on the side. It's a tiny little red flashing light. And if you're more than a couple of feet away, you can't see it. This red frame indicator is going to make knowing that you're recording an awful lot easier. I did a piece to camera earlier on for a video and did about a five minute piece, looked at the camera and realized it hadn't been recording because you can't see the indicator on it. So that's a real, it's a simple little thing, but it's a really important one for me. And perhaps the most important thing, and I am reading this because I need to get these correct because these are mega, these really are mega changes. And it's the autofocus system. Most of the comments I've received when I've been talking about the G9 and the EM1, EM1 Mark II has been about the G9's poor autofocus capabilities. Now, for me personally, I don't push at the limits on that, so I don't notice it too much. However, an awful lot of you do, especially if you're using fast moving objects and especially ones where you've got um, object tracking across the screen it just doesn't really keep up and it's, it's it's sluggish and that can cause so many problems so just having a look at this these are the they basically taken the autofocus system from the s5 the full frame s5 system which is a considerable improvement on the g9 and the g9 is considered to be a considerable improvement over the gh5 and the gh5 has a firmware update as well so it's worth having a look at that one but i'll read it off what it says Eyes and face are detected at a two times faster recognition speed and humans and animals at a five times faster recognition cycle speed. That's huge. That's a minimum of 100% improvement. And, you know, getting them for a 250% improvement overall on, on some of these. You know, this is absolutely fantastic to be able to get these sort of improvements on the autofocus. Presume it works well, but they usually do keep up with what they're saying. So this has given quite a sizable chunk of improvement on the G9, especially to bring it up to the S5 class, because that's, that has been different league up to now. On the ones who do a lot of speed tracking, tracking and recognition performance on autofocus are improved with the addition of head recognition. So it recognizes a head as opposed to a full body or the eyes. So again, that's given a tighter control as to what's happening insofar as the autofocus, especially on tracking. And finally, human and animal recognition can be set on or off when the autofocus is set to a single area, to one area, which wasn't available before. So that's given you more options of what you can do. These are huge improvements and very, very worthwhile to see. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite chuffed about these and I really can't wait. I think it's the seventh, perhaps. I, I can't remember the exact date. Um, I'll just try and wind up this if I can. But I think it's the seventh, which is... Um, the release date for it. Whatever it is, I do know that it's going to make quite a sizable difference to the performance of the camera. So that's great. And a final thought on the G5 Mark II. I've seen quite a bit of, um, shall we say, um, uncomfortable reviews on it. Not, not particularly complimentary because it's not a huge step up from the GH5 and I think people were expecting a big leap of a GH6. Well, first of all, using the GH6, 
Lumix have said that the GA6 will be released towards the end of 2021, so it is on its way. The GH5 Mark II isn't a huge increase over the GH5, and it's getting quite a bit of uh, stick over that, but I, I look at it in a slightly different way. I'm looking at it, if you were to buy a car, a new version of a car comes out, usually after a couple of years, they'll bring a facelift version out. It's just got some nicer trim, it might have some different seats, it might have a different styling look to the outside, but it's basically the same model as it was. To me, this is what they've done with the GH5 too, and I don't think it's a bad thing. It's going to be costing about the same as a GH5, so you're getting a better camera for the same sort of money. It's got some new features in it, which bring it up to date with what's happening with technology anyway. It does have an important side effect on the used side. Now, if you're already a GH5 user, your camera's probably just gone down in value somewhat. But for somebody who's in the market to buy a camera like a GH5 and it was just out of reach, this may very well bring it into reach for you a little bit more. It's, it means that the GH5 itself is going to drop down slightly in price for its used in the used market. And I think it's a really good thing. We need the gh 52s we need the GH6s, we need the new cameras. Although I love the, the idea of buying good quality used equipment, I am also believe that you do need new equipment because that's what actually keeps the market going and provides the, the used equipment for people like me to buy. So it's really important on that. The GH6, ooh, that's a bit tasty. Now, I'm, again, not a great fan of super megapixels counts insofar as the numbers. I don't go in for the big numbers. I don't pixel peep particularly anyway. I still use my um, AMD OM1 and my OMD AM1 Mark 1, which is a 16.1 megapixel camera, and I've had some phenomenal results out of that. So I don't necessarily believe that you need these big pixels. But there's rumours, I've seen it on two different sites as to what the sensor size is going to be on the GH6 when it comes out. One is saying about 24 megapixel, which is fabulous. One's saying about 33 megapixel. So I'm not sure which way it's going to go. I haven't actually had anything confirmed in what I've read. But Whichever way it is, it's not going to make a huge difference to me insofar as the, the pixel count. I'm not a great fan of super high pixels, but what it does is it brings the Micro Four Thirds system back to being compatible um, with its peers of other uh, platforms. And by that, I mean it puts us in the position where we don't seem the underdog anymore. Having a respectable 24 or 33 megapixels when the big boys have also got the same really is going to bring us in that league. I don't think we need to from a system, but I think sales-wise we do. What it really has meant though for me in all this is that both GIS with the um, Olympus Digital Systems um, since the takeover and also Lumix have both shown a considerable commitment to keeping the Micro Four Thirds platform very, very buoyant. It shows a commitment into doing that and as a, as a committed Micro Four Thirds user, that really gives me some comfort. So I would quite happily buy any Olympus equipment or any Lumix equipment in the comfort that uh, there's still going to be development there and it's still going to have a future. So that to me is really good because I know that some of the pundits have been writing Micro Four Thirds off. I did say something about the Northrops the other day and also I was watching Jared Paulin absolutely obliterating Micro Four Thirds in one of his um, commentaries. Both have done this for some time. I personally think the Micro Four Thirds system is here, it's here to stay and it's here to improve and I think it's great. What do you think? Leave me a comment below as to what you really think about things. I'm really impressed with the comments I'm seeing. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, and I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers, please hit the subscribe button below and the little bell to send a notification when I release a new video. But also, a big thank you to all the ones who have hit the PayPal link below and give me a donation. Those donations go towards things, I say it's for a coffee, but it goes towards things like putting fuel in the van for when I'm out doing some of my outside um, projects, such as the Hadrian Wall walks and the viaduct walks, the railways. It puts... Um, it gives me the ability to put film in cameras. I'm, I'm doing the update on the Olympus OM-1N, the film camera that I've had for 41 years. And I've just put a film into that and that's going to need processing. So the donations which I'm getting that from those people really are being put to good use. You're keeping the channel on the air and I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for it. Thank you. Your names will be scrolling at the end, by the way. Whatever happens, if you do get the chance to get these updates, Go and put them in, I think it's going to be well worth it. But the most important thing is still keep on taking the camera out, 
take lots of photographs, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <music>